it was overwhelming and astonishing. I don't think I ever expected in my creative life to have such an invitation. It caused this tremendous adrenaline rush and I also wanted to get some kind of process of thinking about it very, very quickly. So we established a visit here quite early on and that set something in motion, thinking about what I could do with those proportions. The building it sits in this very imperious, colonially dominating position at the top of the long avenue as you come into the Giardini. And that seemed to be something to think about, how to use that, or in a way even abuse that, you know, um, which is where the thought of the folly started to come into my mind. But of course I began to think about the height of this space and the sense of something left behind and the folly of sculpture on one hand and the folly of using height. And these columns began to emerge, so I began to do drawings of these columns that would go in this space. And then it seemed very necessary that the columns could be looked into, so there was no confusion that they were real columns, they were fake columns, and their pretense could be there for all to see. And gradually, for want of a better word, the kind of narrative of the sequence of works began to unfold almost naturally where surprise was important. To conceal and block and use these framed doorways very much as points of entrance and exit. So there was this sense of staging as though the sculptures had a performative role to which an audience would become another group of protagonists within that performance. The audience would be as important as the works themselves. The studio leaves the work, if you like, you know. I think the studio does travel to the venue and is there right up to the last minute. And then it has to be erased. It has to depart. What's left behind is the exhibition. <laughs>